are such an asshole. Blue Jean. I just met a girl named Blue Jean. That's a song from the 80s. Most of you won't remember because you weren't alive. David Bowie. Song about a girl named Blue Jean. That's what the 80s. That's what you missed out. But now you got woke diversity shit. Like, oh my God, what's your genitalia? Who are your parents genetically? Like, not if they were accomplished. Just what was their race and gender? It's a Wikipedia entry. <clears throat> this is also from uh, Shark Toss. You've pointed out in great detail on your videos and books how bad dating is. But I want to go back to something you've brought up about letting the girl choose you. When you've done the work and made something of yourself, while there are very few good women out there, being acceptable makes it more likely that a good woman will make herself available to you, at which point it's up to you to decide if she brings value to your life. Yes, this is um this has been oh, how do I it's been one of the if not the most important conclusion, if there's one conclusion that 20 years of red pill philosophy and thoughts and spewing bullshit on the internet has concluded, if there's one lesson to, to walk away from, is become the best version of yourself possible before you even bother thinking about ask a girl's out. It is the most expeditious and efficient way to attract women is to become the best you could possibly be. I, certainly, there's uh, benefit in game. There's benefit in volume and numbers. But the most efficient, the way you're going to spend the least amount of calories of energy, the least painful way to attract women is to go to the gym, put yourself as best together as you can, make good money, <clears throat> although balancing it without letting the girl know how much money you make. Just become the most attractive you possibly can, and then the girls are going to do the maximum amount of work for you as you possibly can, being as in good a shape as you. So, like, if you're five foot eight, you know, well, you're still going to have an uphill battle. Six foot two, you become the best. They, you, well, girls are going to do a lot of the leg lifting or the, the leg work for you, and it makes it easier. Um, and then the the second that's so that's. If there's some to learn, you don't have time to read shit. <clears throat> That's it. Don't bother asking girls out until you've gone to the gym and stopped being fat. There, there you go. Same thing for you girls. Don't bother pining for men until you lose the weight. And then you hear the ring, and but no one cares. You don't care anymore. Um, <clears throat> then the second thing is once you do that then, and I have found it looking back, I would have saved so much time, headache, effort, man, maybe not so much emotion. Just, just I would have saved so much pain, assery. Just investing the time or going out with the girls that were willingly going out with me, not pulling teeth, not not hoodwinking a girl into going on a date with me. Not you could just tell they didn't want to go on a date. They just sat there. They said, "I'm bored." But then there was a handful, and they were the distinct minority <coughs> of women that, let's go. Like, oh, okay, she likes me. And would I have gotten laid less? Yes. But it would have saved so much time and pain assery. You, like, like Chris Beckloff said, although he wasn't the one that came up with this, you go to a dog pound, how do you choose the dog? You let the dog choose you. It's the same thing with girls. Don't fucking try to sell yourself to women. Yeah, here I am. I'm the, uh, do you want to buy me? I'm the product. Do you want this product with these traits and, you know, amenities? You don't? All right, cool. I'm not going to try to sell you this product. He's just like, nope, you want the girl going? I want that model right there. And they're like, okay. And that, that would have made things a lot easier. I like to think the situation with you and your GF is a good example, but don't decide until you've read Cappy's books. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it kind of was. It was um, there was there was some other things where God, I had <laughs> I had had a pretty good run, but uh, these girls were just I, I ran into a spate of fake Christian girls, and that burned me out. And then. Uh, I was having success, but they were all a pain in the ass. And this one, the last gal before the GF, two things. She says, you just like her because she treats you nice and cooks you food. 
Hmm. And it was the same gal that punched because I said, I don't want to sleep with you anymore. I'm like, that's it. I'm done with this shit. Fuck, fuck these. And the GF, she was not a nine or a 10. She's like a, a solid mid 6.5. She cooked. She treated me nice. She showed up on fucking time. <clears throat> and it was the least painful bullshit. And yeah, and it just, she, I like him. Oh my God, sit down, ladies. Let me, man, this might be crazy. This might just be crazy talk. <clears throat> uh, maybe you girls should should leave. Leave the room. I don't want to recommend something that's just going to blow your little precious girl brains out. The way the girl got me is she treated me nice, was an adult, and cooked me good, really good food. Really good food. In contrast to me, you just like her because she treats you nice. That was such, I'm sorry, girls. You got to go hunt that girl down because she exposed what you really thought. How dare men expect to be treated? Now, you just like her because she treats you nice and makes you food. <laughs> really? It, and even Vlad Elkums with Cuddle Wookums, it was the same thing. Like, there's a, there's a contingent of women that think, how dare you expect to be treated nice? It's true. It's how bad it is. I'm like, <clears throat> yeah, fuck you, super pretty girls. Like, I mean, literally and figure, I'm done with this shit. I'm just done. I just, I've there has never been a nine or a ten. I haven't dated that many nines or tens, but I did date some. Not one of them were a pleasant experience. Not a single fucking one. There were some eights that were good, but man, just don't date models. Don't date girls from California. Don't the nines and ten. No. And I don't mean this as a cult. Six and a half to sevens that shut the fuck up and have a job and good finances and cook for you and are nice. And this is the this is the one I get a huge erection on. Are on time. Holy hot Batman. That's uh, but yeah, it the the general strategy. <clears throat> I think we combine those three things. Become the best you could possibly be, which is why I have linked below. The Book of Numbers and more, Jermaine. I hate to promote other people's books over my my own, but I would get Unplugged Alpha because me and Rich Cooper, but the community in general came to the same code. The best way to get women is don't chase women, chase excellence. That's Rich Cooper quote. And when you chase excellence, then women will say, oh, here's an excellent man. More women are going to be attracted to you and more of them are going to do the work. And in, in the ideal world, you would just go become the world's most eligible bachelor. You go do your thing. You make your money, become Tony Stark or whoever. And then the girls would come in and make it known that they're interested in you. And then you just pick. And But it, it would save you a tremendous amount of time. But <clears throat> you can't do that until, one, become the best you possibly can be. Two, keep an eye out for girls that have interests. And don't try to sell yourself to girls who don't want to go on a date with you. That, you know, in other words, let them pick you. And then three, if, if you can, sixes, sevens, maybe eights if you're a particularly good-looking guy. But God Christ Almighty, avoid nines and tens. Absolutely. And then, and then I guess in that would be their behavior. I know it's boring shit, guys. Coach Greg Am's going to agree with me. I know Coop and uh, CGA don't agree with each other, but there's a fair amount of commonality. <coughs> The most important things when you when you're done with this horny shit. Yeah, sex is important. Peace, quiet, contentment. I would say punctuality, good finances, and I for lack of a better word, it's gonna sound a little harsher than what I intend, but obedience. I'm not fucking arguing with you. We're doing X. Don't fucking don't you Dare waste precious fucking seconds of my life. Ask me why we're doing that. Just, oh, cool, X. I think the Masons have a, a saying, and you will obey with jovial compliance. <clears throat> jovial. Not just miracle. Jovial. Let's do it. Absolutely. We're getting the blue car. Let's get the blue car. You're going to buy that thing? Let's get that thing. Okay, absolutely, sweetheart. Jovial obedience. Cappy, da, da, da. hey, 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 feminist, shut the fuck up. You're so over. <clears throat> Nobody likes you. Women aren't happy being feminists. 
No one's happy with that situation. It's just a bunch of miserable, hate-filled women. Shut up and just go live in your misery. We're done. Some people might want to be happy in life. Some people. And jovial obedience is a is a very direct path. So I have a link below the book of numbers, analyzing the ROI and the pursuit of women. Ladies, if you'd like to know how to get a guy, you can read that book and reverse engineer it. But I know you girls don't really like guys that much. I know that. It's in the numbers. Like, you get it. Shh. No more talkie. We've heard talkie for 50 years now. You know, no more talk. No talk. Go and be quiet now. Your behavior says everything we need to know. Until the behavior changes, then I'll change my, my view. Uh, and then also, The Unplugged Alpha by Rich Cooper, link below. Any super chats? We got three. Big George Costanza, two bucks. Did you ever catch guff from a girl's parent? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, what do you mean guff? Everyone gets guff. I mean, it's to the extent. I mean, I guess I've had every range, but I've never, I am a master at handling girls' parents. And it wasn't anything to do with some insight. It's just that I was so poor and resources were so limited and my life was directly threatened by the lower levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I wasn't going to tolerate fuck all shit um, from any girls I was dating parents. And there's this one guy trying to court his daughter and he's like, I, I can't mention because I don't want to identify these people. <clears throat> he had a very interesting collection, very interesting hobby. I'm like, well, that's interesting. You collect anything. Else? Yeah. Collect lots of guns, you know? I'm like, oh, cool. Like, you know, yeah, because I got several daughters. You never know who's scoping around. I'm like, oh, really? And then I knew it was in the Air Force. I said, since when did guys in the Air Force, when were they allowed to have guns? Just like right back in the – and this is – let me explain to you how to handle boomer parents and now Gen X parents. <clears throat> you just shove it right back in their face. Just get right up in their fucking face. Like, fuck you. Speak directly to me. Punch me in my face, whatever. Like, just get right up. Like, I'm not tolerating your bullshit. I'm not tolerating your test. I've had some real psychopaths. There was one gal. She was psycho. Her mom was psycho. Hung out with her mom once. What a miserable woman. And unfortunately, we were at we we're at a cabin up north that the mom owned. Well, probably the stepdad owned it. And um, <clears throat> there's a woman going straight to hell. But I couldn't say anything because I needed to get back home. Uh, but just like th the word no, that's just how you. And it's, it's very simple. Like, you're not my parents. And I don't even listen to my parents. I support myself. That was that was the key thing. When you're poor and you support yourself, and you got to worry about food. And here's some sanctimonious fucking suburbanite asshole who typically did spoil daddy's little princess. Coming in there. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, dude. Um, you know, bring her back. Like, yeah, I'll uh, I'll bring her back when I bring her back. Okay. Uh, I got to go to work tomorrow, so it's not going to be too late at night. But, yeah, I'll bring her back when I bring her back. Like, yeah, fucking call the cops. Fuck, just fuck off. Just this... Tired, burnt out, mentally exhausted man. I got this little bit of free time. I decided to spend it with your daughter. And your daughter's kind of a pain in the ass anyway. And here you like I'm a fucking 15-year-old. Yeah, fuck off. Just I, and it, you just don't you don't catch the guff. They throw you the guff, you like let it fall. I'm like, you got anything else? Okay, I got shit to do. I'm more of an adult than you. Do you have fucking bullshit going? Do you need something? Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go and try and fuck your daughter, all right? <clears throat> Garrett Howard, two bucks. Don't chase, train jujitsu, lift weights, and hunt. Yes. My truth. The king. Two bucks. Profit and loss statements. Keep talking dirty to me. Yeah, exactly. What a 401k plan. You file your taxes early? Tell me more. Zeno Bob, five Canadian. Aaron, you have to give us advance notice for when you will be live. Most viewers, it goes more super chats. I don't have, I don't, uh, that that cuts way too much into my freedom. Way too much. I'm be, I'm not even joking. I do it when I can do it, and especially here in Vegas, I got to do it in the morning because it seems the internet works pretty good in the morning. Then in the afternoon, it goes to shit. 
<clears throat> South Dakota, I can do it at night. He's just, I, I, yes, I, I you are right, Zeno Bob, 100%. If I had a regular schedule program, a lot of people would tune in. That's not conducive to my lifestyle. I am, you guys donate enough. You do. I make enough money. It's what great about being a minimalist. I don't need to schedule and change. You guys are kind enough to donate. And we got, we got plenty guys. We got plenty. <clears throat> um, tomorrow is the 10 year anniversary of asshole consulting. And already this morning, although not prime time, I think I've received enough donations. I could afford me and my girlfriend dinner tomorrow for a celebration for 10 years. Asshole consulting. So maybe later when I get stable internet, Maybe when I can't hike as much or there's other things, I'll, I'll do it. But for now, it's just, just, we, we've reached the promised land guys. We're just, we're just going to go do what we want. Okay. I'll come do a video. Uh, deeply closeted gay man for five bucks. Return to cigars. I'm thinking about taking a break from them since they seem to taste gross. If you smoke them consistently, even if only one per day. Yeah, I had to give them up because they were having an effect on my voice. I still cough because of that allergy thing I had back when I was three. But it's a lot better now. And then also, um, I was starting to have a feeling in my gut. And when I had the colonoscopy, they found three polyps, which is normal. But I did read somewhere that, like, yeah, tobacco use does increase the number of polyps. I'm like, ah, you know what? This is starting to feel weird in my stomach. I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. So I have, like, maybe, maybe one every two weeks. Uh, and only when people are around. But honestly, I I miss the cigar lounge culture. I don't miss the cigars. I miss my buddies in South Dakota, the cigar lounge there. But I kind of don't miss the cigars. And even here in Vegas, the cigar lounge I go to, the, the staff keeps turning over. And then the clientele keeps turning over because it's a transitory city. So there's not a lot... Um, <clears throat> it, it's kind of it's like, oh, the guys aren't here. Oh, where'd they go? They moved. Oh, okay. Who's the new guy? Okay. When are you leaving? Next week? Okay. I won't I won't get to know you too well then. Ross the Skunk, 10 generous dollars. Paid off the credit card finally. So here's 10 for interest. I don't have to pay. No, po, no, po, no, mo. Outstanding, Ross. That's great. It's great you get rid of your credit card debt. That's the highest interest rate debt there is. So that's good. Your finances are on the way. Did you follow Dave Ramsey's thing or what you do? Uh, my truth, the king, five bucks. Respect your elders only applies to elder worthy men. Oh, yeah. Dude, the the boomers were all like, don't trust anyone over 30, man, which meant people who fought World War II, went through the Great Depression and defeated communism temporarily. <clears throat> that was the baby. Now, now is the don't don't trust anyone over 30. Don't. Um Lack of common sense or retirement as you age proves you made it to old age because medicine and not wisdom. Absolutely. Absolutely. I wouldn't listen to any Gen X or Boomer fuck. Guys, don't listen to Gen X. That whole jaded kind of edgy thing. Yes, there's an element of truth that, that, that did happen. And, and we are more resilient. And yeah, we're the best generation of all the generations, but we're still shit. We're the ones that brought you diversity and inclusion. We're the ones that are in head of these corporations now, like, oh my God, what's your genitalia? Because it's so important. <clears throat> oh, our children all need to cut their genitalia off. So we're edgy on social media. That's us. That's that's our generation. Oh, do you have a mental disorder? You totally do. Here's some drugs. All right, there you go. Link below are the two books. The book numbers analyze the ROI, the pursuit of women, and Ro uh, not Rolo, uh, Rich Cooper's book, Unplugged Alpha. Please go get that. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.